Hello YouTube, this is Matt Pullen, and uh, this video is going to be on uh, Grigoryev's combined method in Rook Endgames. We'll start out with this position. Uh, white is up a pawn, Rook and Pawn versus Rook. The pawn is moving up the board, Queen Square is on C8. The white Rook is cutting the Black King off from the pawn, a distance of two files. The white king is behind the pawn, and the rook is uh, defending by frontal attack, preventing the pawn from pushing. Now, the most important thing, perhaps, about this position is that the rook does not have checking distance. There are only two squares in between the rook and the pawn. And for there to be checking distance, there need to be three squares. Knowing this, white can force the advance of the pawn with his king alone. Rook, I mean, uh, king b5, threatening to push the pawn to c6. The only way to prevent this is for black to give check. Then, if the king goes to c6, he's blocking his own pawn. He's not threatening to push the pawn. So that is why we go to a6, threatening to push the pawn to c6. So the black rook comes in front, attacking the pawn and preventing its advance. So the king goes to b6, defending the pawn and preparing to push. Rook b8 check, and king c7. The pawn is uh, threatening to push to c6, and the rook cannot safely check because uh, the white king has gotten too close. So after the rook pulls back, say to b2, and white pushes to c6, uh, black gets behind the pawn, king b7 threatens to push, and now uh, after a rook b2 check, king c8, the king moves diagonally, creating a square on c7 for the pawn to push to. After rook c2, c7, white has achieved a Lusena position and wins easily. So yeah, uh, if the pawn is on the fifth rank or further, then uh, the frontal attack by black doesn't really work. Uh, because the white king can force the advance uh, with the, with the uh, king alone. Hmm. Yeah, uh, let's look at a harder one now. Now there are three squares in between the uh, king, rook and pawn. So black has checking distance. So the method that we just saw is not going to work. But white can win if he knows something that uh, is called the combined method. The uh, positions where Black's Rook defends uh, you know, by frontal attack were first studied by the French master Chiron, but then the Russian Grigoryev came along and improved most of Chiron's analysis. Uh, so what we're about to see Grigoryev discovered, as, uh, and he called it the combined method, because it combines the uh, powers of the king and the white rook. So. Uh, first, we'll see what happens if white tries to uh, push the pawn right away using rook c1, getting the rook behind the passed pawn. Now, the black king can come in because the rook was cutting off the uh, king across the e-file. So, say king b4, king d6, c5 check, king c7. So the black king has made progress. He's gotten his king in front of the white pawn. And after, say, rook h1, you know, to, uh, to, drive, to attempt to drive the black king off of the seventh rank, now black can play rook to g8 with the idea of coming to the uh, third rank and setting up a Philidor position. So black achieves a draw in this case. So the problem was that white was cutting off the black king a distance of two files and he let the black king come in too soon. First, you want to use the king to uh, you know, go as far up the board as possible and only then do you use the rook behind the pawn. You want to get the king two squares diagonal away from the pawn to either you know a6 or e6. The black king takes away uh, e6 in this case so that is out. So we want to get our king to a6. How do we do this? We'll first go to uh, b4, threatening to push the pawn to uh, c5. After rook b8 check, uh, actually we'll look at an alternative here. Uh, black can try uh, rook e8 
in order to uh, uncut off the Black King. Like if this white rook moves somewhere, then the Black King will, uh, you know, he'll just come across and get in front of the pawn. However, this fails because rook takes, king takes, king b5. And now if uh, black takes the diagonal opposition with king d7, then king b6 and white wins. So, yeah, the, uh, the attempted bridge with rook e8 loses. So black just has to go along for the ride and play rook b8 check. King a5 threatening to push, rook c8. King b5 threatening to push, rook b8, and king to a6. Now black plays rook to uh, c8. Uh, rook a8 check would be a mistake because then king b7 and the pawn will advance. So rook c8 attacking the pawn and preventing its advance. And only now does white bring the rook behind the passed pawn. He's threatening to push to c5 now. And the black king now is free to come in. So the black king tries to go to uh, e7. If the, uh, if the black rook blockades the pawn, then white's king can come in and uh, drive the rook away, followed by pushing the pawn. So king e7, bringing the king in. And now... Uh, c5 is not sufficient to win because black brings the king in to uh, d7. And now uh, white has a couple of tries. If he brings the king in to b7, uh, then black plays rook c7 check. And if king b8, then black plays king c6, gets in front of the pawn, and draws. Or if the king goes to b6, then black gets in front of the pawn this way and draws after he you know, would transfer his rook to the uh, third rank. So uh, instead, say white plays uh, king to b6. Now black plays rook b8 check. And if the king goes to the a file, then just, you know, he pulls the uh, black rook back. And now the black rook cuts off the white king from the supporting the passed pawn. So this is an easy draw for black as well. The moral is pushing to c5 immediately is not sufficient to win. He must combine this with the king, coming in, uh, coming in with king b7, attacking three critical squares on the c-file. If black tries to protect his rook with king d8, uh, this is a huge blunder. White would just play rook to d1, check, and black loses a rook. So instead, uh, if black pulls the rook back to h8, simply pushing to c5 wins. So say black tries to blockade by playing rook to c5. Now white plays king b6, again attacking the rook and preparing to push the pawn. If king d6, again, white will win the black rook after uh, rook to d1 check, because the, the rook cannot block the check on d5 because the white pawn controls that square. So um, the black rook has to move. Uh, if the black rook moves to uh, c8, then you know white will just push the pawn, and then you know king d7 doesn't doesn't work because of c6 check, king d8, c7 check, king d7, and now king b7, and wherever black moves here, he loses a rook. So so after king b6. Uh, say black plays rook h5. And now, if uh, c5, then the black king will come over and get in front of the pawn. However, white still has a win, as Gregoriev showed. But uh, I think it's much simpler to play rook d1 here, reaching a one position where the black king is cut off on the, the file. So after rook h6 check, preventing the pawn from pushing because white was threatening to push to c5. Rook h6 check, king c7, and now black cannot check anymore because his own king is in the way, see? So black has to play like rook h5, uh, preventing the pawn's advance and threatening to check, you know, forking the king and the pawn. But white is in for a uh, pleasant surprise when he plays 
rook to d5. And this attacks the rook, you know, cuts him off from the c5 square. And if rook takes rook, then just pawn takes, and black cannot stop this white pawn. So uh, the black rook has to retreat, say h4, and now uh, white just pushes rook c4, c6, king e6, rook d1. And again, as we saw before, white will zigzag with his king, push the pawn to c7, and reach a Lucena position. So that is the uh, Grigoryev's uh, combined method uh, for rook and pawn endings. First, the king comes to, uh, to a6, and then the white rook comes behind the pawn, preparing to push. And the white king has to use his uh, ability to attack multiple squares on the c-file to drive the black rook away. Thanks for watching.